Davis own goal. Well, there's one goal in it, you never know. Ipswich have level. Welcome, everybody. It is vlog time. Top of the table, championship stuff. First versus third, it's Leicester versus Ipswich. And because of this weird scheduling quirk, these two played less than a month ago. I was there. It was 1-1, a late goal deflected from Sam Morsi, rescuing a point for Ipswich. Since then, not much has changed for Leicester. They are still out in front and have a seven-point lead over Ipswich and Southampton, who have just squidged into second place. The Tractor Boys have been reeled in by the Saints. Both teams have their selection issues. Ipswich without Burgess, without Morsi and George Hurst out for the season up top are weakened. But Leicester have no Fatawu, possibly no Dewsbury Hall. We'll find out whether Enzo Maresca is playing possum about that. And Enzo Maresca is not going to be there himself. He has a touchline ban. Right, it's getting late in the day. I've got to get my act together, get some extra layers on. We are in the midst of storm ice as well, so it's going to be cold and windy, and we need to head up the M1 to the King Power for Leicester versus Ipswich. Well, not my most organised, bit fraught, but we are here at the King Power. Team news is in Luongo, back in for Ipswich. Big news for Leicester, Dewsbury Hall does play. So maybe Maresca was playing possum with us. Let's get in to the stadium. Here we go then, players on their way, Leicester versus Ipswich. Seven on the clock, nothing doing so far. Leicester on top, starting to build some pressure. Ipswich just getting out of their half for the first time, nil-nil. The biggest opening so far goes to Leicester as a giveaway as Burns to Travis and Dewsbury Hall just for the final pass, can't find McAteer. Slow pace, methodical as we expected, nil-nil, 16 gone. 25 gone, that's the closest anyone's come. Chowdhury from the edge of the box, bends that with a right foot. Good save by Flagby, Ipswich still not getting into the game. Leicester on top, but not really making their advantage press time. Nil-nil. And there is the opening goal, 31 guard. It is a carbon copy of an own goal scored by Leif Davis for Ipswich against Leeds. It's a good give and go by Mavadidi and Pereira. Mavadidi sticks it across Davis, wrong place, wrong time, and he has got a second own goal in about the space of a month. The game's lack pace, and it just kind of caught light then for that move. Davis, own goal. Leicester 1, Ipswich 0. Leicester have picked up where they left off after the goal. Vestergaard had a save from a corner. Ricardo's just gone close. We're hoping they can get it to 2 before half time. 37 gone, 1 0 Leicester. And that is half time. Leicester 1, Ipswich 0. It's an own goal by Leif Davis that looks terribly similar to the one he scored for Ipswich at Leeds. Honestly, Leicester have been in control of this. They're not the type of side that play at a sort of tempo and make a hundred chances that are going to see them blow anybody away as such, but they've really been in control of this. And to be honest, Ipswich have offered precious little going forward. We're not quite in men against boys territory, but we're getting close. And if the pattern doesn't change in the second half, this could be a comfortable win for the Foxes. Let's just say Ipswich is clearly missing Morsi and Hurst et al. And they're still in the game. Um, and while there's one goal in it, you never know. But this is looking to me rather like a home win. Half time, 
less than one after it's nil. Well, Ipswich have started the second half of their best spell of the game, sort of five minute rally, keeping Leicester hemmed in with a few set plays. Good save though from Manson from Burns, half volley from the recycled corner. We have 50 in, Ipswich will want to try and keep that up if they're going to get back into this 1-0 Leicester. Well, Leicester go in close twice there from the set play. Header cleared off the line and a uh, big block from the one go from the following shot there. Starting to build the pressure up again as we come up the hour mark. You think it's actually going to go to the bench soon. But it's still only one goal off it here, 1-0 Leicester. Ipswich, as we expected, going to the bench then. Sarmiento and Taylor in just after the hour mark. Well, Leicester going close from the set play, cleared off the line once again. Another two changes for Ipswich. I think they've played their whole hand now. Broadhead and Hutchison in, 18 to play. Another big save by Blackie there. Wolfen and gives it out, playing out from the back for Ipswich. Cannon curls it right footed. Blackie makes the save to his left just a minute before that Jewsbury Hall, rather like in the first game uh, between these two and Boxing Day, down in the box. Close call for a penalty, we think. Fired into the box, the first contact bounces back, I think, off that. Huge handball shout from all the Ipswich players. I'm up the other end, I'll plead the fifth. Black Leeds play really well in the goal for Ipswich, just denies McIntyre. It's kind of like a 50 50 after Akin plays him through. Well played again by the Ipswich keeper. Five on the clock remaining. Wow, and there is the equaliser. 89 on the clock. Ipswich have leveled. They have been putting the pressure on and going for the last five, ten minutes. I think it was Luongo on the edge of the box. He hits the shot down the middle of the goal. It's parried by Hermanson, followed in by substitute. Jeremy Sarmiento with about a minute from stoppage time. Ipswich pulled out a late equaliser against Leicester again. And we are back on my drive and it is 20 past midnight and I'm very tired and it's been a very long day and I need some sleep. But final reflections first on Leicester 1, Ipswich 1. There is an element of surprise in my voice. You've seen my thoughts. Um, perhaps um, this is a game that could have got away from Ipswich in, in the first half. I think I did use the term men against boys very, very nearly there. But... Very, very much like the first game on December 26th, not so long ago. The pattern does feel eerily similar in terms of Leicester perhaps being in control, dominating, looking like they're good for the win, and then just slowing up a bit, grinding to a bit of a halt in the last 20 minutes and Ipswich going for it. Maybe Ipswich were ready for that today with Sarmiento and Hutchinson and Broadhead all in waiting for that end of the game. And that's how it all panned out. And that late equaliser, it wasn't as late as last time. I think it was 92 minutes gone when Sam Morse equalised in the game at Portman Road. 88-89 for Jeremy Sarmiento today. Just wind back into the first half. Lots of deja vu things here in this game with Leif Davis's own goal um, very similar to the one that went in off him at Leeds. Steffi Mavadidi, actually, um, really good in both the games. Um, you know, just top, top end, too good for the championship type player. Like most of Leicester's squad is, frankly, Leicester in control. Again, they don't create five, ten chances like maybe we saw Southampton do in the first half. Um, but they do control the ball. They do control the territory and the opponent. And they do still control the championship sitting at the top of the table there. But once again, they let Ipswich back in. And um, we should mention as well, before we go to the bigger picture, um, Hladke in goal for Ipswich. Very good today. Kept them in the game with three or four. Um, no miraculous mega, mega saves, but... Um, 
you know, he stood up and he passed the test and kept his team in the game um, as um, you would hope for your goalkeeper to do. So, look, big picture. Let's deal with Leicester. They looked a bit dead on their feet. Dewsbury Hall looked a bit dead on his feet at the end. Obviously, there was no Fatawu. There was no Enzo Maresca on the touchline today as well. So, um I still think they're going to win the league. Um, they've got 66 points and we've got 18 games to go. So two points per game, add 36 onto that and you're at 102 points. And um, Leicester are back in the Premier League. So that's pretty much what I'm anticipating is going to happen. I was sat in the Leicester end. Thank you for my ticket. You know who you are um, today. And lots to talk about Southampton though. So... Leicester fans not necessarily seeing this as a done job, a done deal um, just yet. Um, Again, I was really impressed with Leicester for parts of both games um, in this little kind of double head-to-head thing across, you know, sort of four with the games four weeks apart with the way the fixtures all planned out. But they didn't put it together in the, you know, for the whole game. And if they had, I think they would have beaten Ipswich twice, to be honest. But um, ifs, buts, maybes, and they didn't. But I'm sure, look, by Easter... Well, no, I'm going to correct myself there. I don't think they'll go up excessively early, um, you know, like Burnley did at Easter last season, purely because I think there's going to be high points totals across the board for the top three, top four this season. And... um, They'll get the job done, but it might be with two, three games to go rather than four, five, six, um, excuse me, et cetera, et cetera. For Ipswich, this is a fantastic result. I'd set this up um, in lots of preview content that I'd been part of saying, if Ipswich can get out of dodge here with a point, that's a huge result. First of all, it shows great resilience and great character. They could have lost both games to Leicester. They didn't lose either of them. They got draws in both of them. And Ipswich still are the team that has lost the fewest games of any team in the championship. Unbelievable. And I'll say it for the first time in this little monologue. And for the millionth time, they were in League One last season and are dealing with three year one parachute teams. So that's just outstanding. But the reason a draw is such a... Such a fine result is that it, the point takes them back above Southampton into second place. And we all understand Southampton are on fire at the moment. And there may be nothing that Ipswich can do about Southampton in the long run if they're going to go another 10 games unbeaten and bang another 23, 24 points um, on the board during those games. What can you do about that? Wrong place, wrong time. The situation is, though, there's 18 games to go. Ipswich have now played Leeds twice. They've now played Leicester twice. So that's done. They have a home game against Southampton, which could be gigantically enormous if things are still sort of relatively tight at the point that game comes around. But essentially, if you start viewing this as a race in the big picture, Ipswich just have to match Southampton's points total for the remaining 18 games. And you would think, given what Southampton are doing, that would keep both sides above Leeds, unless Leeds do something miraculous um, and, you know, have a real big win streak. Again, what can you do if they are going to do that? Um, They would be in the Premier League, you would think. So um, just incredible to even consider that. And I guess the hope for all Ipswich fans is that run of uh, Southampton games where they play away at Leicester, they play away at Leeds on the last day of the season, they play away at Ipswich, and they play away at West Brom in the run-in. And um, they're not looking like dropping many points, Southampton at the moment, and uh, that may be the place. But just um, excellent from Ipswich's point of view. It's a game they could have lost, and um, just character, a bit of timing, peaking at the right time in the game, and... um, Maybe Mr. McKenna needs to take some credit for um, some good substitutions, if that was indeed, as we're imagining, part of the game plan. Anyway, big waffly ending from me today. So I will call it quits there. I'll say thank you 
everybody for watching. Get your comments in. I know a lot of you are going to watch this game on Sky, so you'll have plenty to say about it. Let me know your thoughts down there below. And make sure you stay with the channel. Click up here and you can see, I'm going to say yesterday's recording, because but I oh know it's Tuesday, yesterday's recording of the Championship Checking Podcast with Sam Parkin. <laughs>